Now, before I get started, I just want to mention that this video is aimed at my New Zealand audiences who are wanting to get into medical school or dental school in New Zealand. And so if this sounds like something that's interesting to you, please stay behind. And if you're still here now, awesome. Hey guys, if it's your first time here, welcome. I'm Harry and I'm now a fourth year medical student studying at the University of Auckland here in New Zealand. And today I'm joined here with... So my name's Tim. I'm going into my fourth year of dentistry in the University of Otago. And yeah, I'm, it's glad to, I'm glad to be here right now. Yep. Thanks for being here. Pleasure <laughs> to have you here. Of Thanks course, for coming. Of course. Let's just get straight into it, shall we? Yeah. So first point that we're going to be talking about is how to enter medical school in New Zealand. I'm just going to be talking about how to enter medical school at the University of Auckland. So basically what you do is you apply to either health science first year in the University of Auckland from high school or you apply to the biomedical science which is under Bachelor of Science and then you apply to second year entry using your, your grades in your first year in combination with your UCAT, UCAT scores and then there's also an interview that you have to go through before you, you're gaining ex, uh, acceptance into uh, Auckland Medical School. So all this information, you can find it on the university websites and I'll put the link down in the, the description below. You could go and look it up yourself. This is basically the same for dentistry as well. So you can have two pathways. First one, which is first year health sciences for Otago. And then the second one is bachelor of sciences. Uh, basically, you do UCAT, you do your grades. Depending on your UCAT, you get the interview or you don't. And that's if you pass the threshold. And then that changes every year. Mm. And once you do get the interview, it doesn't, it's not necessarily go into a school, but more, it's like a barrier if you do get accepted into dental or not. Similarly, if you do want to go into as bachelors or sciences, uh, it, does, it is dependent on your GPA. And so depending on your GPA and if you got the interview or not, that's how you get into dent. Yep. That's that's the graduate pathway, right? Yeah, the yeah, graduate yeah. pathway. Yeah, so yeah, same thing for uh, University of Auckland. We've got a graduate pathway as well. So you finish three years of your initial bachelor, which is, you know, either health science or biomedical science. And then most people want to apply first year, yeah. but, you know, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> life circumstances or, or, you know, just chances that or sometimes people like to pursue their career in terms of wanting to finish a degree, yeah. then get into medical school or dental school. So it's, it's the same thing for the U University of Auckland. You've got the graduate pathway, you finish three years of your bachelor's, and then you apply using your final GPA of the, or of the three years. Yeah, so I was going to ask about the interview for dents, but yeah. I'm just going to go through. So for, for the interview for Auckland Medical School, it's a multiple mini interview, which means that typically you go through stations with interviewers and then each station you are marked separately. So technically you can screw up one station and then go mm -hmm. into the next one and then, you know, kind of recover. So it's not the typical panel interview where you go into a room and there's five interviewers staring at you. Yeah, it's not like that. That's how the Auckland Medical School interview works. How about the, uh, the dentistry? For dentistry, basically, you have one chance. <laughs> mm. So one chance, one interview. But instead of having, it's two interviewers. So you get interviewed by two people. They ask you a series of questions and then one scenario question. And then depending on how that goes, depending on that, you get an or not kind of thing. How long is the, because it's kind of like yeah. a panel interview, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How, 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 how long is it? Around 15 minutes, I think. But it can go longer. Normally, they just cut it early if you do go over time. That's quite intense then, right? Because if you kind of screw up something, then, then it's like, you know. The interviewers are mostly nice. If you do end up screwing up in one part, it's better to just brush it off and basically, you know, just get over the interview. Don't, like, falter and I guess bring your confidence back. Yeah, that, that, that would be the same for Auckland Medical school, in, school interviews. So for MMIs, I think across the world for all medical schools, once you get through a station, just forget about it, you know, mm -hmm. just move on. And yeah, that's the best way to go about it. So now we've briefly gone through how to enter medical school 
in the University of Auckland. And we've also gone through briefly how to enter dental school at the University of Otago. So now we're going to talk about briefly what, what's medical school like at the University of Auckland and dental school at the University of Otago. So like I said, you go through your first year, pre-med year, or you do your bachelor's degree and you apply as a graduate. Then you go into part two, MBCHB, second year medicine. So typically how, how, how it works is that we don't follow the typical uni university schedule. So we don't have, you know, four papers in semester one or four papers in semester two. And then we don't really have exam seasons. Basically what we do is we have our own schedule. We go through modules in terms of learning the anatomy and physiolog physiology and the clinical side of things. So we go through each module would be a human body system. So, mm -hmm. you know, say cardiovascular system or digestive system or musculoskeletal system, for example. And we learn everything relating to the anatomy, physiology, pathology, clinical scenarios relating to those. And that part of our course would be the applied science part of it. And that's probably around, I'd say around 70 to 75%, well, around 70 to 80% of the content of second year medicine. Yeah, so apart from that, we also have a professional and clinical skills module, which we learn everything about, you know, the soft skills yeah. of being a doctor. So things like um, patient interactions, difficult scenarios you encounter in a hospital and things like that. So basically you're learning and also we're, we're learning the examination technique. So how do you do perform an ab abdominal examination or, you know, auscultating or listening to the, the, the breathing sounds, for example, we, 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 we learn the practical skills through that module. And then we also have a multi health module, which we learn about, you know, the inequities in the, in the health system and how that contributes to differences in the health outcome, things like that. Also one highlight of second year medicine that you don't get in first year would be cadaver dissection labs. Mm. So we get to, do, do you guys do dissections uh, in, in, den, in dental school? Only in second year. Second year? Yeah. So, so, so do you have um, someone who's donated the body and yeah. you get to cut, you know, go in and learn about the, the anatomy, right? Yep. Yeah, so that's basically what we do as well. That's, it's, by the way, it's a, a really pr privileged opportunity to be able to learn anatomy through a real human body. So I'm really glad that we have that opportunity. Yeah. So applied science, professional and clinical skills, how to moldy, and then cadaver dissection labs. And then apart from that, we also have microscopic labs, looking at cells, yeah, things like that. So that's pretty much it for second year. Pretty much it's the same for third year. You go through human body systems as modules. You know, basically what we say is in second year, we go through everything below the neck. Oh yeah. In third year, we go through everything above the neck and then you've got the endocrine system and the blood and infections. So the applied science part in third year medicine is around the same and everything else it is around the same except for you have a medical humanities paper, which is kind of like a, an elective paper that you have to, you have to choose a field of studying that's related to healthcare, but kind of outside of it. So something like music or, or teaching, the one that I, I did last year when I was third year was a course called the student teacher. You learn how to be a good good teacher in a clinical environment, which is very which is very important, right? Because because yeah, you know doctors are, you know you're meant to be mentoring and teaching junior staff and the trainees. So that's a really important part of being a healthcare professional, being able to pass on your knowledge. And then third year is a bit harder than second year, in my opinion, because first of all, you, you have that medical humanities elective course alongside with everything else that you, you've had in second year. And then the, there's also bits and pieces of assignments here and there. So it's a bit harder than third, then third year is a bit harder than second year. But in general, if you can manage second year, third year is all right. So first, second and third year is what we call preclinical years. So you're just, you're literally like a uni student. You're just going to lectures, going to tutorials, going to labs and learning, learning in a university environment. 
fourth to sixth year is what we call clinical years. So I'm, I'm going to be a four, fourth year in the next few weeks and we'll see how it's like. But basically fourth and fifth year is pretty much you as a medical student. And I think it's the same for Otago Medical School. I'm not too sure. For medical schools, we just rotate through different specialties in the hospital and we follow a team around and learn how to interact with patients and applying our, our knowledge in second and third year into the clinical practice. And then at the end of fifth year, you have a very big OSCE. So I think OSCE stands for Objective Structured Clinical <laughs> Examination, something, yeah, something like that. Basically, OSCE is a kind of, if you're coming from Australia or, or, or the UK or New Zealand, it's basically a kind of, sorry, if you're not from those countries, it's basically a, a kind of examination where you see patients and a senior qualified medical officer marks you and you know gives you comments that kind of thing so there, there's a big clinical assessment at the end of fifth year so it, it, once you pass that you go into final year medical school which is something known as trainee intern year so you're basically training in to becoming an intern doctor once you graduate so we get paid twenty seven thousand new zealand dollar for that year um not too bad <laughs> yeah not too i, I mean that's that's a yeah. bit of a perk you know, <laughs> yeah, well, after six years of being at I uni. Mean, you'll use it to play for yeah. mine, though. <laughs> yeah, do you, do you guys get paid? Uh, no, we pay to literally oh, uh, uh, see I patients. Mean, I mean, yeah, sure, I mean, sure, we we pay too, but then we get a sort of a taxpayer payback in a way, <laughs> which is all right. Anyway, we'll talk about money at the end yeah. of the video. So, trainee intern is basically your training to be a intern doctor. So you're expected to take around a third to a half of what a junior doctor or house officer or intern doctor does. So you're basically learning to be a, a graduate doctor, essentially. And yeah, that's how medical school works at the U University of Auckland, year one to year six. It's probably the same as Otago Medical School, but um, I'm gonna pass it on to Tim to talk about Otago Dental School. So for dentistry, there's four years after your first year health sciences and every year there's three, pa three main papers and which is the clinical paper, the biomedical sciences paper and then the community paper. And then second year, for the clinical paper at least, you do a lot more similar because you're just starting, right? Mm -hmm. And so you go into the same lab a lot, you start doing a lot of simple restorations, you start, I guess, going into model teeth, start drilling them out and then just putting, just yep. bending it back in. Uh, and that's, that's the exciting bit, right? Because you're move, moving from like uni yeah, to, yeah, 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 true. And like any other sciences or like health sciences, the community paper, it does cover a lot of more Maori health, like in terms of biostatistics as well. And for biomedical sciences, you do a lot of microbiology, you do, uh, you learn physiology. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Right. You, you learn physiology, you do anatomy, yeah. and yeah, it just covers a lot of si different bases. Mm. But the change comes in third year, where you start seeing patients. And so that's part of the clinical paper. That becomes a lot bigger in fourth year, where you do... So in third year, you do a lot of more simple stuff, like you start... You learn how to do checkups, you learn how to... I guess you do restorations on normal people. Or like on your patients and you also get to start scaling people so that's cleaning around the teeth cleaning the plaque and calculus of the teeth and in fourth year oh uh, allow me to interrupt that's what i forgot to mention as well so for third year medical school at the university of auckland in semester two in the second half of the year we we there's like a transition yeah. so we start going into hospital one day a week so it allows us to go from, you know, transition into more, yeah. you know, from your uni, you as a uni student into fourth year, fourth to sixth year, you, you're in hospital all the time, five days a week. So in third year, it's the same as you guys. There's a bit of a change where we get to go into hospital one day a week, you know, to see some patients for around eight weeks. Yep. And so I think that's quite important to have that change. Anyway, mm. so back to you uh, about um, fourth year <laughs> dental school. Sorry about I mean, the interruption. Anyway. Also to add to third year. So you do go in, I guess, from first semester. 
where you'll put into pairs where one person will be the dentist and one person will be the dental assistant. And so you basically alternate between being the patient and being the, I mean, being the dental assistant and being the dentist, where you do have your own patient list as well. And depending on how fast you get through it, you can get, I guess, See, that, through as that's the thing that I was shocked that you get to see, you have your own patient in third year. Like, yeah. <laughs> we're not allowed to touch anything relating to patient information or management or treatment in third year. We don't get to touch any of that. In fourth year, we, we get to access them, but we don't get to touch yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so we do get access to the information. We do yeah. upload it to the server and the patient record as well. Mm. And then in fourth year, on top of that, we get to also start doing some more advanced stuff. Like we get to start doing crown preps. So that's putting a crown, like a main made crown onto a tooth. And also we get to do root canals as well. So that's going into the tooth, removing the pulp from the tooth and then filling it back up with material. Yep. So that's fourth year. There's a lot more stuff we do. And in fifth year, basically, Fifth that's year is the final year. The of final year, year. yep. Mm. That's when you start training to become an actual dentist. Like mm. Pretty much the same as, yeah. you know, the training intern year for yeah. medical students, right? Yep. Yeah. It's also when you get, uh, when you can get recruited for, I guess, the year after when you go into the workforce mm. and stuff like that. Yep. True. So it's basically pre-work life. Yeah. Pre, pre-registration or pre-getting pre, yeah. your license. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Pretty much. True, true. Okay. And then lots of medical students also have other hobbies outside of university. So, you know, people go to the gym and there's people volunteering somewhere here and someone's oh, have their own. I know someone who's got their own restaurant um, and lots of people do music. And I would say that for any one of you who's entering medical school, anything that doesn't get you arrested and, <laughs> okay. and anything that doesn't get you arrested and, and doesn't kill you, it's a fair game. So...